Hello, I'm Patrick McDonald. Uh, this is my marketing strategy assignment. I did it over the Puma Clyde Court shoot. So let's get started. In the assignment summary, the product I chose is the, Pu is the Puma Clyde Court shoe. It's a men's basketball shoe. Uh, Puma has been one of the top lifestyle and sportswear apparel brands um, in the world. Uh, they, they haven't been in the basketball market for over two decades, uh, closer to 30 years now. But they recently uh, announced that they're making a comeback and they have uh, several celebrity endorsers and um, they sponsor several professional athletes such as uh, Marvin Bagley and their celebrity endorsers are uh, Jay-Z among others. Uh, brief description of the product. Um, it features three main components which are energy, ignite, and hybrid. Uh, energy is the superior cushion offered from the heel all the way to the toe. Uh, ignite is the foam midsole at the middle of your foot and the heel cage that keeps your heel locked onto the ground whenever you're playing basketball. Um, and a hybrid is just a, a combination of the two elements. Um, the outsole of the shoe is rubber, which makes it more durable and uh, has better grip on the floor. And the lacing structure is dynamic for comfort as well as stability. And there's two color options. Um, it's a neon orange and yellow and a black and purple model, and they're both $120. The target market selection for these shoes, um, well, the company was founded in 1948 in Germany um, by, there were two brothers, one founded Adidas and one founded Puma. And they tend to focus on athletes and people who live an active lifestyle in their day-to-day -day life. Um, but with these particular shoes, they need to focus on the younger generation um, because you know you look good. If you feel like you look good, then you're gonna play good. Um, some stimuli. Uh, the primary one would be the design of the shoe. Um, the customers want a product that looks good, but is still um, tasteful. Uh, it's not too flashy, too over the top. You know, it looks good, but not too much. Um, don't sacrifice quality or the durability for the sake of, of visual appeal. Um, this is something that I think a lot of companies struggle with and um, with these particular shoes, the, the focus needs to be on comfort and durability and uh, stability while you're playing basketball. Um, the secondary stimulus is you have to get the buyer to have an interaction with the shoe. So the physical appearance is gonna draw them to the shoe, but once they pick it up, they need to be um, in love with what they pick up. Problem recognition. Uh, they need to move from being interested in the product's visual appeal to wanting to purchase the shoe. Um, and the product needs to have something that sets it apart from the others. Uh, there's several other brands that are in the basketball shoe market, such as Nike and Under Armour and Adidas. So what do these shoes have that those don't? And I think that's the, the issue that needs to be addressed. Um, and they can just simply get this across the buyers by letting them know the technology that was used to uh, create the shoe. The, the customers don't need to know every single scientific detail and uh, engineering detail, but if they just get the gist of it, I think that that'll be, that'll be good. Uh, the search, the online market is the main source of searching, so uh, our goal is to have a uh, customer search um, high quality basketball shoes and for the search engine to return uh, or send the results of our shoes. Um, Buyers can buy at the Puma store um, online as well as other athletic shoe stores such as Foot Locker and Finish Line and Champ Sports. Um, the buyer will hopefully recognize that the Puma Clyde Court shoe uh, from the online advertising and the social media presence because Puma has a significant social media presence um, and that will result in brand recognition and then they will want to try the shoe on and eventually purchase the shoe. Some evaluation alternatives. Uh, some salient features of the Puma Clyde Court, uh, their durability, uh, their comfort, and the supportive structure. Uh, what sets our shoes apart are the extra benefits that our shoes offer on top of being a good looking product. So it's not just one dimensional, there's many, uh, many aspects to the shoe. Uh, price and accessibility are evaluating factors for, for buyers. So take the Nike LeBron shoes. Well, those are $175. Well, these shoes are $120 and they're very comparable as far as durability. And
how can you purchase? You can purchase online or face to face, and uh, you, they accept cash, credit card, and as well as debit card. If you purchase online through any of the channels, uh, these shoes have a free two day shipping uh, that come along with it. And there's, there's also several promotional codes that you can receive up to 30% off. Uh, Post-purchase valuation, the customers, once they purchase the shoes, will receive a survey. If they purchase it in the store, uh, they'll have a survey on their receipt. Or if they purchase it online, it'll be emailed to them. And uh, it'll just have questions such as, you know, were there customer service representatives assisting you? And uh, what did you like about your experience? What would you change? Just things like that. Uh, it's really just to gather feedback and then use that feedback to implement positive change in the marketing strategy and, and uh, just uh, hopefully gain more buyers in the future. Post-purchase behaviors. Uh, Post-purchase behaviors express the satisfaction or dissatisfaction that the buyer has with a particular product. Uh, if there's any part of the buying process that a customer was uncomfortable with or was unhappy with, uh, we want to know about it. You know, we want to we want to know where we're failing and where we can improve. And our big thing is we want to avoid cognitive dissonance, and that's just buyer's remorse. You know, we don't want anyone buying our product and it falling apart or you know it not fitting them properly because then they're just going to regret it and then they're going to you know then they're going to pass that information along to the people that they know. And that's not what we want for our brand. And we want to promote positive post-purchase behaviors to increase customer loyalty and also loyalty to the product. You know, you know, we want the customers to be loyal to our brand, but also to our particular shoe that we're, that we're spending a lot of time and effort to get back in the market. So in conclusion, um, you know, we need to have a focus on customer service and our social media presence, as well as uh, customer satisfaction. You know, like I said, to promote brand loyalty and uh, positive post-purchase behaviors. Celebrities and athletes, They'll help, you know, bring recognition and, and a little bit of uh, publicity to the company. But, you know, once once all that fades, you know, the the buyers are going to realize that it's the people that they make connection with and, and the relationships that they're going to they're going to form with the employees and the customer service representatives. So that's where we really need to pride ourselves.